Hi uh, guys, Mike here from Com3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the second part of our first person controller series. So in the last video, we got a basic controller up and running. We have keyboard inputs and we have mouse look. We're limiting how far up and down we can look. Now we want to actually add some extra functionality in there by adding sprinting. Now this isn't going to take long because of the way we have it currently set up, we can control the speed relatively easily, but we are going to make this slightly modular. So we'll be able to toggle this on and off and set what button is the sprint button in the inspector. So same as always, before we start, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with what he's doing. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. So let's just do a quick recap of what we've already got. So we have this controller that we can walk around our plane on. Nothing spectacular, but it works. So let's get adding sprinting. So let's open up a first person controller script and we'll start editing it. So what we are gonna need, we're gonna need a few new variables and we won't actually need another method because we're just gonna determine the speed of our player inside of our handle movement input. So where we're actually calculating the current input, instead of multiplying by the walk speed, we can multiply by a sprint speed if we are sprinting. So let's jump to the top and do a little bit more setup here. So we're gonna add in another header and this one is gonna be functional options. And this is where we're gonna just have a list of booleans, whether or not we want that function to work for this controller. So again, let's add serialize field, private bool and sprint. And we'll set that to true by default. Next, we want another header in here, and these are going to be our controls. Let's call that controls, serialize field, private, key code. And what this will do, this will give us a drop down inside of the inspector so we can select what key we want to be assigned to the sprint functionality. So I'm going to call that sprint key. And again, we'll give that a default so we can set that equal to key code dot left shift. Next, right underneath where we've got our movement speed or our walk speed, we want to add in a new float, and that's going to be our sprint speed. Give it the default of six, so we'll sprint at double the speed that we can walk. And the final variable that we need is actually going to be another property, so we can add that up at the top here with the uh, can move property. And the purpose of this is to actually determine whether or not we can sprint and if we should sprint. So this could be done by using an if statement with two different checks in there. So we need to check whether or not a can sprint variable is true. If it isn't, then we're not meant to be sprinting with this controller anyway, so we'll just ignore it. But if this is true, then we also want to check if the sprint key has been pressed. So we could check if can sprint and get key sprint key, but we could do this through a property and we can actually just call is sprinting. So let's create a private bool is sprinting. And because we only need a get accessor for this, we don't actually need uh, curly brackets and get and set. What we can do, we can do a lambda operator, which is equal to and then greater than, so the little arrow. And then after that, we can check can sprint and input dot get key sprint key. So what this is going to do, this is only going to ever be true if can sprint is true and we're currently pressing our sprint key. So instead of doing that double if check, we can just do it inside a property like this. Just makes our actual code a little bit cleaner. So now that we have that, if we scroll down to our, where we're handling our movement input, instead of just having walk speed, I'm just going to put some brackets around walk speed here and we'll use a ternary operator. So we can use is sprinting question mark. So if we are sprinting, we want to multiply our get access vertical and get access horizontal by our sprinting speed. And then we'll put the call on. So if we're not sprinting, we'll use walk speed instead. And we can copy that over and replace our standard walk speed variable there. And everything else should actually be the same. So now if we're moving, but we are sprinting, 
we'll multiply by our sprint speed. If we're not, we'll just multiply by our walk speed like we were before. So did we save that? Yes, we did. Let's click on our first person controller. We see now we have some extra options. Can sprint is a Boolean and a sprint key is assigned to left shift. If we click that, we see we get this drop down with every key on the keyboard and joystick controls as well. But we'll leave it at that and we'll leave our sprint speed at six and uh, let's have a go with this. So we're moving at a uh, standard three. If we hold shift, we're now sprinting at double the speed. Let go and back to walk speed. And now just like that, we have a secondary speed where our player can sprint. So it's been really short and the next video is actually gonna be pretty short as well because that's gonna be jumping. So I hope to see you over there. I hope you've learned something. I hope this is coming along nicely for you and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.